I've been looking for a metal lathe for literally decades. I finally found one. And today, we're gonna make it run again. Hey YouTube, uh, what are we doing today? Well, I have quite literally been looking for a metal lathe for at least 20 years, uh, off and on, uh, never finding a really great deal on one. Uh, it's kind of like my anvil story. Every time I'd find one, it was something I'd like to own. It was way out of my price range. Uh, this one here, uh, I picked up pretty much for a song. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna tell you how much I paid for it. It came with a lot of stuff, and actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn you over to my past self, which is just a couple of days after I picked this up, and I'm gonna let the past me explain what this is and what it came with. Hey, me of the future. <laughs> I want to record this while it's still kind of fresh. It's a couple days old now. Um, but I guess I'm starting my own antique machine uh, museum or something here. Uh, we've been looking for some stuff for a while, and one of the things we've been looking for was a lathe. And... I got a really outstanding deal on this little baby lathe. This is a Sheldon, and if it focuses, you can see that it says it's a Type KS number 1014. Uh, 1014, I think, is just a serial number. It's, you know, whichever one came out of the production at that moment. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cutie. Uh, the belt, it's a little leather, little leather flat belt here overhead uh, uh, mounted motor. The uh, belt has already broke once on me and I just kind of patched it together. I've ordered a new one. Uh, everything seems to be working. I got a, a bunch of tools for it, a bunch of parts and equipment. Uh, here's a whole stack of drills and reamers and some very expensive reamers at that, some in there. Uh, there's some Oh, some little cutters here, little chucks, uh, oh my goodness, there's all the change gears, some centers, ah, uh, let's see here, I don't remember what I put in this drawer, oh yeah, just a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, <laughs> some tool holders, some cutters, and that kind of stuff, um, yeah, and then there's stuff down there in the bottom, uh, got another little chuck there. That's actually a chuck that probably came with it. It's a little baby uh, three jaw. The one that's on it's this four jaw. We've been messing with it that way. Uh, there's a steady rest under that steel wool. There's some neat stuff in that little tin. Got these guys. Got boxes and boxes of stuff I still yet need to go through. So yeah, that's that's my little lathe. He sh he starts, he runs. He uh, I, I've done very little with it. I've just kind of cleaned him up and I played a little bit. I made some chips. You can see there's a pile and stuff like that. But uh, no, he he runs on this antique little half. Well, not really. Well, it's it's an old motor. It's a half horse, single phase, uh, reversible motor, uh, branded Craftsman on it, so I'm sure that's not the original. Matter of fact, another thing that they did, well, of the things I've done to it so far, uh, they had a belt guard on here, and it, this is the factory belt guard, and the reason I think this is, so, like, the belt itself, I don't think is the right belt. I think it's too long. The motor, I know is not, I know this thing didn't come with a Craftsman motor on it, um, but somebody has adapted it. They built this little bracket and moved the cover over to make room for this longer belt, I think is the problem. Uh, it could even be, I'm not even sure, but maybe the pulley may be too big. I, I'm, I'm not 100%. I haven't found all the information. But 
One of the things I did was I did get rid of this. This was a belt guard that somebody had cobbled together. And it's, it's funny because you look at this and you can see the hate and contempt for having to do this in the, in the, in the quality of the workmanship on it. As opposed to where they, when they attached the motor and they put this uh, bi-directional motor on here, and they put this drum switch in and you can see where they, they very carefully made little brackets and little clips to hold the cords. I mean, they did a really lovely job on it. And then they built that thing, you know, that thing there and they were full of hate. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the metal lathe, and it, uh, <laughs> while I was, where I got this, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away secrets of where I got it, because uh, it sounds tacky. I mean, I know those old people, they won't need it, but uh, anyway, they had that. <laughs> Take a look at this little guy. This is the... Greenfield Tap and Die Corporation of Greenfield, Massachusetts, made in USA. Little giant wood turning lathe. Now, this, what's interesting is uh, some of the parts for this were in the parts with my metal lathe. So I just went back and I just went back and said, you know what, I'm going to take that lathe too. So we went back and picked this up. Uh, it appears to me, now I don't know, I'm not 100% certain on this yet, but this is, this is what they had in here when I got it. And there's some parts missing and, and stuff. And this will be a, probably a series of videos that we'll put together at some point where we restore this thing to get it to where it's operational anyway. Um, but it looks to me like they were doing metal spinning, like maybe they were spinning some bowls. Uh, you know, we got these pins and, and yeah, so I don't know exactly, but we're going to find out. We're going to play with it eventually, but it's a four speed. It's another flat belt driven, uh, piece of equipment. It is incredibly heavy. Everything on it is cast iron. This, the bed is cast iron. The legs are cast iron. This, the legs over here, that's the framework that hold the, uh, the pulley assembly and you know the shaft and all that kind of stuff and the motor is an antique General Electric uh, it's a three-phase 220 uh, half horse uh, electric motor fortunately we have three-phase at the house and I will be running it to the garage uh, pretty soon I hope because we you know we've got plans for it but uh, I just wanted to kind of showcase this because I'm getting ready to clear off oh that was Jerry Jerry was a race car driver anyway I'm just getting ready to clear this I'm trying to get this cleared off because I actually have paying work that has to happen out here and uh, yeah so I wanted to kind of showcase the disaster and the mess that I <laughs> have brought in here so anyway that's me of the past. I'm going to go back to the future and uh, finish this video up. All right, so now you've got a better idea of what it is, what, what I got here. And so there's actually been some progress made since we picked this up. Let me show you something here. Uh, one of the things that didn't work when I first got it was the feed mechanism wasn't working the way it was supposed to. I could, well, it's actually in gear. I could, the, 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 the half nut would go ahead and engage like right there for doing, you know, cutting threads. But the regular, like the cross, the power cross feed and the power feed and stuff like that just wasn't working and it had to do with inside here there's a clutch and it's like a, a ring and a cone very similar to what you'd find in a a standard transmission for uh, uh, the synchros. So it's just got a turned cone and a turned ring and they kind of mesh together. And what had happened is somebody had uh, 
tightened it in such a way that it would not engage. So I ended up, because I didn't want to just force anything, because I didn't know what exactly was wrong with it, so I ended up having to take this whole uh, carriage off, the whole saddle and the, uh, the, the apron and all this kind of stuff. I pulled this all off, opened it up, found out what was wrong, and we put it back. So now our uh, quadrant and all this kind of stuff, now it works, and it works beautifully. However, something you find in older equipment all the time is you find that it's being run by flat belts. And in this case, it was a flat leather belt. Uh, it was this one right here. This belt here, you can buy them, or used to, I don't know if you can anymore, but you used to be able to buy them where you had it already made. This was one of those kind of belts. It had, you can actually see where, what they would do is they would taper the belt and then they would glue them and you can see the overlap. I don't, you can kind of see the overlap here in the belt from here to here. Uh, so they would have been shaved and tapered and glued and it was a set diameter. Uh, this one is pretty rotten. It's, I don't know how many decades old this is. The lathe is uh, 39 or 40, I think, is about the age of it. Um, this one broke while I was using it. Uh, I have, whoops, oh, there's half of it. Let me pick that up. So I have some belt lacing that's not so much for this type of belting. It's more for conveyor belting and stuff. I have some here from somewhere. I don't even know exactly where it came from, but um, I trimmed, I squared off the bad section and I just temporarily, well, it wasn't temporary. I, I, I knew it would fail again because this thing is very, very old and rotten. Um, but I ran it again for a while, just playing with it. You know, just kind of getting a feel of how the thing works. Uh, so I laced it and then it broke pretty much really close to where it had broke the last time. Uh, so anyway, to fix that, you can still get leather belting. Leather belting is not cheap. It runs 10 or 12 dollars a foot. Right here is 48 inches, 4 feet, so it's about 50 bucks worth of belting. Um, it's the same width, it's inch and a quarter. I think I got it a little thicker than I should have. Uh, I was just going by, uh, I, I literally was just guessing. I probably could have got a, a thinner belt, but we're going to, this should be able to go over these comfortably enough. So we're just going to, we're going to run it. If it doesn't, we can get, we can get different, we can get smaller belting, but um, I bought the laces. This is probably a lifetime supply for anything I'm going to be using, so that was another 50 bucks. So 100 bucks later, I've got enough to replace the belt. Now, there is one thing that I'm missing. Well, I'm not missing. I had to go out and find separate. You don't just, I guess you could if you wanted, you could just go ahead and uh, cut this to length and then lace it and, and just run it as is. But ideally, you need to treat this belt um, and what I did a little research on the, uh, on the, uh, World Wide Web, on the internet, and I ran across an interesting formula that is cod liver oil and lard, and it seemed like a legitimate, uh, treatment, belt treatment, so what we're going to do here in a little bit is I'm going to go, I, I found lard was not too hard to find. Cod liver oil took me a little longer to find. I found it at a, uh, uh, like a CVS or something, I think. I think it's actually their brand. Uh, it's either CVS or uh, Walgreens or, you know, one of those big-time uh, uh, pharmacy chains. Uh, cod liver oil is not cheap, but that seemed to be the cheapest supp supply, and it was also the only that I had found that was 100% cod liver oil. Most of them were uh, mixed with like uh, flavors to make it go down better. Uh, we're not drinking it, so we don't care what it tastes like, but what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a batch of this uh, 
secret recipe. We're going to treat this belt, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the belt off of the, uh, the lathe, the little giant lathe, and we're going to go ahead and treat it too and try to bring it back to life because it's pretty old as well, and it's a lot longer than this one, so I'm hoping I can at least get a little more life out of it. So um, let's get started. What we have here is Farmer John's Finest Premium Lard, or as they say in Espanol, Manteca. So uh, I actually uh, don't know if I've ever purchased lard in my life. But this is four pounds of lard. It was the smallest container I could find. And these... This is the cod liver oil, like I said, this is a CVS brand, you know, it's a store brand. 16 fluid ounces. I don't know the weight, but the, the, uh, the, the, the instructions I said, it, that I ran across said that it was uh, two pounds, uh, two to one by weight. So uh, I'm sure this doesn't quite weigh a pound. Uh, being oil, it probably you know uh, it just says it's it says it's fluid ounces. So I don't know, I don't know what it weighs. So I'm going to take, but I figure if I take a little less than half of this uh, uh, lard and this entire bottle, that ought to be a close enough ratio. I mean, it's it, it can't possibly be that critical. Uh, it might be. Who knows? So let's see if I got a way to. Shovel some lard here. <clears throat> My understanding is people actually drink this this stuff. Ooh. Who knew this was going to be a cooking show? All right, this uh, this delicious smelling elixir here gets put on the belt while it's hot. Gonna My understanding is you don't want to put too much, you don't want to soak it in it. Um, I understand soaking it will actually uh, weaken the belt, at least initially, so I, I don't know how true that is, I don't have any idea, but I do know that what I've made here is way more than I need. But we're going to treat it. I'm going to give it a good coat, and then I'm going to let it set and cool, and then I'm going to give it another coat. And then we're also going to coat the other one as well. But I'm going to coat both sides and the edges and all of it. So All right, I'm going to let that set for a couple of minutes and while we do the other one here. This one here, uh, this is the one off the uh, wood lathe, and my concern about the one on the wood lathe is that I'd like to kind of, this is more of a rehabilitation, and my thought, I'm just going to dip that end in there, what I'm hoping is that this will rejuvenate the leather enough so that I don't Im immediately have to replace it once we put that, once we get that thing running again, so... Uh, I don't know if that's a, it might just be a hope and a prayer, but that's what we're going to do. That's the hope and a prayer. This belt is in such bad shape, I can't tell the hair side from the opposite side. It may be, may be doubled up. It might be where you can use it both. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a, oh, this has got a, it's got a name stamped in it. I can't read it. There's words in there. Something... Hmm. 
Webco brand. Huh. All right. All right, there's our new belt, or well, yeah, it's the new belt, but we've got a nice treatment on it. It looks great, and it's really supple, so I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about the treatment. So the other belt, I've got it setting over here. We, uh, I put a lot on it. Like I said, I'm trying to get it to recover, maybe restore it some. Uh, yeah, it may or may not survive. I don't know. Uh, here in a minute, I'm going to wipe the excess off of it, too. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to get a measurement. I'm going to square up these ends and then we're going to go ahead and uh, get our lacing cut for it. See? Nice. Nice clean edge. Pretty. All right. Um, yeah, and you can actually see that stuff is soaked in. It has actually penetrated the entire thickness of that, so that's pretty cool. Let me set this in here first. Just holds it. Stick the leather in. Put my gauge in. Kind of get it centered. Okay, so it started. Youngest child just came in and told me it was time to eat. So what I'm going to do is, let's see if we can get that in the camera lens. Yeah, see, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to take a take my dinner and then I'm going to come back out and we'll get the other end of this. There you go. Now let's... All right. 
right, I was having some trouble with this. It wanted, it didn't want to track. It kept popping off, got that kind of stuff. Um, cleaned the oils off of the surface of the belt on the skin side. I cleaned all the pulleys, and I've been just letting it run for a while, and it seems to be getting better. So uh, that seems to be the best. That seems to be working. I did, <laughs> I did change out those lacings I bought for the older, the other style that I had. I don't know, I just didn't like, I I think, see the thing is I have this, the tool for installing the other style, so I, it, it just goes a lot easier and it makes a cleaner looking installation. Uh, the other laces are probably strong enough, but I, I, they just wanted to twist when I was putting them in. So, anyways, we'll live with it. Uh, there's a lot more adjustment, but I'm going to let it run for a while, just kind of, because it seems to be, it, it seems to be getting it to seat a little better. So, uh, so it's tracking every time. It, it, the longer it runs, the, lo the better it seems to track. So I'm going to let it run for a little bit. And uh, then we'll have to adjust the tension on the belt because I got it a little too tight right now. But yeah, new belt, new lathe. And uh, anyway, I got plans for it. We got parts we got to build for the uh, power hammer. I got some parts I got to build for, that I might use it for on the uh, Ranchero. And till next time, bye.